Okay, this is going to be a quick video on working with a wind spinner design, adding your own design to it. I've had several people ask for a video on how to do these. This is a wind spinner blank that I use. I may add these to the website for other people who want to make their own. Um, a first thing to note here is if I drag a selection box around this, I save all my wind spinner files, all my blanks, as separate objects. As you can see here, there's 18 objects. It's not combined yet. I just do that for the purpose of editing the file, adding something to it later because I would have to break it apart if I saved it all combined as one. So anyway, this is 18 different objects, the inner circle, and then 17 paths. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have my blank open. I'm going to go File, Import, and I'm going to bring in a file that I have here to add to this wind spinner. So I've imported that and I want to add that to the wind spinner. The first thing I would probably do because when you're working with open paths fill colors do not work. When you combine it all it can ca cause problems so first thing I would do is come down here to the bottom on your color selection and hit X to turn the fill color off and if you hold shift and hit black that will turn the stroke on for this centerpiece. And as you can see, the stroke width on this piece is a little different than this. It's not really going to hurt anything, but for visual representation here, I'll go ahead and adjust it. And you can turn your fill and stroke on, on and off here in your fill and stroke menu over here on the side, which you would find here under object, fill and stroke, if it's not already open. But I'm going to go to stroke style and I can adjust that stroke with the default is usually that. So I've adjusted that. Now I'm just working with two different objects here. Everything's got stroke. I want to difference this part from this part. The first thing to note is this piece in order to difference from this circle here has to be on top. It's kind of hard to tell if it's on top when you're just working with stroke. So the best thing to do is select the piece that you're differencing from the circle, come up here to this option, raise selection to top, and just go ahead and click that once. That'll make sure that that barbecue grill is on top. It, I already know that it was because I imported it after opening the wind spinner file. But just to be sure, it's always best to, to hit this. That'll make sure it's on top and you're good to go. Now I'll hold shift, select this circle, and I can go path, difference, and now that easy, that is differenced out of that center ring the way I want it. The only thing left to do before sending this to the machine and saving it is to combine this as one file so now I'll drag my selection tool all the way around it, holding the left mouse button. Now I'll go path, combine. Now this is all one path. So now if I go to node editor, you can see everything gets selected at once. The only final step to do would be to double check it. Anytime you difference or add something, it'll do stuff like this. It adds an extra node there. So you're going to want to go around and do a little node cleanup double check make sure it didn't add too many you know clean it up straighten it up and then when you're done you'll just want to file save as and then you can pick a DXF SVG I recommend both DXF for cutting SVG for future editing and that's all there is to it I'm gonna go ahead and go control Z I'm gonna go back a few stages actually I'm just gonna get rid of that part uh, let me go back again. It disappeared on me. I, I almost fooled myself. Now I'm going to backspace and delete that. Now I'm going to pull in a different one that I added a couple bridges to just crudely. Because the only other scenario with these wind spinners would be if you want to keep that center circle as a solid circle and you just wanted to cut this out as a negative cutout inside that circle. This will be a little different 
I'm going to do the same as the other. I'm going to select this, and uh, this time I'll go up to this menu. I'll turn the fill off. I'll go to stroke, turn the stroke on with a flat color. And as you can see, that did the same as what I did down here in the color palette. Now, once again, I can go to stroke style, change that to 10 thousandths, and you know, it matches the rest of the design. It's ready to add in there. Now, the two things you could do here, I like to keep these with the nine rings that they originally had. But if you're okay with losing a ring, the easiest way to do it would be to select this inner circle, hit backspace. Now you have an eight ring spinner. You can select it all, path, combine, and that's ready to cut. I'm going to hit Control Z, go back a couple steps. Myself, personally, I like to keep the nine rings. So what I would do here is I will come up here and get my rectangles and squares tool. I'll come over here and turn my snapping on. And I will draw a rectangle between those two nodes. Now that rectangle is the same width as this, this uh, gap in these other lines. Now I can just drag this rectangle straight down by grabbing that bottom arrow. That way it keeps the same width, the stroke width changed, but the actual rectangle did not. Now, what I can do is I can hold shift, select this circle, and I'm going to go path, difference. And you see what that did is that took that center circle and cut it into two halves. It differenced that center section out. Obviously, I can't cut that like that. I need to get rid of these lines here. So then I'm going to come over here to my Edit Paths by Nodes tool. Then I'm going to left click the mouse button and drag a box around these four nodes. Now come up here to Break Path at Selected Nodes. Click it once. Now while that's still selected I can go to Path, Break Apart. Now I'm going to click off. Then I can select I can click this line, hit backspace on my keyboard, click this line, hit backspace on my keyboard, and now you see what we've done is turned that center circle into the ninth set of rings for this negative cutout. So that it'll keep this center piece, will be a solid piece, and this will be cut out as a negative. So now like the other ways, you'll just take your selection tool, left click and drag a box around the entire thing, path, combine. Once again, that's done. That is now ready to come up, file, save as, a DXF, and an SVG. And that's all there is to it. Hopefully I didn't do that too fast. Hopefully that makes sense. They're, they're very easy to work with. The most important thing is make sure if you're differencing this, if you're differencing your design out of the solid center ring, you're going to want to make sure the design is on top of that ring. And if you're doing this as a negative cutout, you're going to want to either delete that inner circle or split it so that it will retain that center with this cutout as a negative. But they're very easy to work with. Once you get the hang of it, you can plug in simple clip art designs in just a matter of minutes and be cutting your own personalized wind spinners. I hope that helps some people out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.